Hello again, and welcome to Crime and Music. I'm your host, Brian J. Kinsley, and with me as always, my friend Ben Rubel. Did you see that bus, Brian? Because I'm about to throw you under it right now, pal. Oh, no! What are you going to do? So Brian gets a beer. I know, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe this is, you know, this is a good thing. He's like, I really don't even want to drink a beer right now, but I feel like we need that 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 noise for this is for the audience. This is for our this is for our audience. This is for our fans. You, the listeners, the people, the listeners. Much like this podcast is for you, the people. Every other week, Ben and I will bring you a true crime podcast about people in and around the music business and their misadventures and law breaking. If that's something you find enjoyable, thank you for listening. Share with a friend. Tell everybody you know. Go to the social medias. Give us a thumbs up. I would like some emoji comments. Do you, did you build your own emoji? I can. I, you can build your own emoji. I well, I built my own. Like looks like me emoji guy. Oh, you're yeah, you're a moda person. I don't know. There's a name for it. I don't. Know I, what it try, is. I tried. I wanted to get one with a headband, a sweatband, but they don't have that accessory. Not yet. No. Coming in the future. Put that in there, people. Whoever you are. <laughs> Long story short, uh, use your things to do stuff, guys. Reach out. Crime and music everywhere you get podcasts or social medias. And let us know what you're thinking. Let us know if you enjoy the show. Let us know you're doing okay in the time of COVIDs. Um, we want to hear from you guys. Make sure everyone's feeling good. Yeah, so I have been wearing a headband quite a bit to keep my hair out of my eyes because I'm growing it out. I think we talked about this on our last cast. Yes. Um, <clears throat> just to let everybody know, I don't know if you've gone to our website and checked us out. We're just two pasty white dudes. Whatever. I mean. Don't blow the magic, dude. Whatever. I don't know if you can tell from our, our, our voices, but um, I put that headband on, and I've had multiple people say that I look like Rasheed Wallace. Oh, wow. Of Pistons fame. All yeah. right. Well, yeah. you got a wicked beard going on right now. Yeah, he had he kind of had some beard stuff and whatever. I mean, I'm a tall dude. My goal is once I get under 200 pounds, I'm going to shave this beard. So basically, I'm going to have this beard for the rest of my life. <laughs> Whatever, Santa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. We're in it. Are you ready for another exciting episode of Crime Music featuring Ben's favorite game? Yeah. Guess a guest. I'm ready. And hey, I got the last one right on the YMCA. You did. You nailed it. Yeah, I mean, I would never have known those guys' names, but there was one little hint. That's all it takes. That's Just all it takes, it. everybody. So you two can play along at home right now. Guess the guest. Really lowering our music. I listen to you people who say our music is too loud in the background. What? Exactly. Yes, the guest. All right, let's start. Hold on. Do I know this person? Absolutely. Okay. I got a chance. He was criticized by record executives as being too country. Well, I, I want to guess all the ones we've already done. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did too. I'm like, damn, nope, did that. Nope, did that. Too nope, country. That. Hank Too Williams country. Jr.? Uh, in, in, no, no, incorrect. Hey, he was rock. He was rock. And roll. His first band uh, he was in was called the Treywick Brothers. Treywick Brothers. Yes. Oh, maybe a spark no, there. No. Okay. Keep keep going. Two country. Um, can you he play two country? He played the Gatlin gun operator in the movie Young Guns. Oh, Keep you're going. No, no. Yeah, you're on it now because you're like, I know this. Fact Billy though. Ray Cyrus? No. No. Okay. Um, some called him Randy Bruce Trawick. Rand, I think it's, I think it's Randy. Everybody else called him Randy Ray. I, I, it's on the. You're like, oh my god, is that? Gatlin, Gat. Don't you remember Young Guns? Arkansas Dave, baby, come on. All right, no, I, you're gonna say it, and I'm like, oh my god, I know, I, it's in my head. I, I, well, Allen Brothers? Technic, no, yeah. again, he, he was in the Treywick Brothers. Treywick Brothers. Uh, Randy Bruce Treywick is his uh, birth name. Randy Travis. Yes, you all are right. correct. I, oh was, my I, God. I was trying to go through all my Randy. He did it. Do I make you Randy, baby? Another Ric Flair woo <gasps> for you. You deserve that Do one. It is Randy, Randy Travis. Born Randy. May 4th, 1959. Randy Bruce Treywick. In all right. Marshville, North Carolina. All right, I'd like to just, just, I'm going to throw this out there. I don't say if I'm right or wrong. He doesn't have a ton of terrible stuff he did, and I believe, because he seems kind of like a nice dude. <laughs> he is a nice dude. But I feel like there's going to be some alcohol in this story. I think you may have heard all some right. of this story before, because right. that's basically what happens. Proceed. And we'll get there. Pro- 
I'll see. All right. Uh, Randy Bruce Trawick, May 4th, 1959. Born to parents, Harold Trawick, his dad, and Bobby Tucker, his mom. Bobby Tucker Trawick? Yes. I mean, Bobby, you know how we did that Bobby Knee Tucker where it's like, that's her maiden name. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Marshville. Let's talk about Marshville, North Carolina for a second. Uh, you ever been to Marshville? No, it sounds moist. It does sound damp, right? Yeah. You're like, I should bring hip boots. Moist. Marshville Marsh. is a town in Union County, North Carolina, United States of America. Its population was 2,402 people at the 2010 census. According to the United States Census Bureau, the town has a total area of 2.1 square miles. Are you going to get the new census numbers when they get them published oh absolutely all right yeah because i filled out my census form so we did ours a couple right. times yes a co- what do you mean a couple times i don't know <laughs> the median age is 34 years old for every 100 females there's 88.6 males for every 100 females age 18 and over there were 81 males so there's fellas, some numbers you don't need yep no well fellows go to it's like when i went to central michigan university it was five to one girls to guys that's the place to be if there were like five girls. girls for every one dude. Yep. And we still. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the, the odds were in our favor. Deny. I, I don't think the odds were ever in our favor, Brian. We were not well received. And the one girl that did come knocking at the door, we slammed the door in her face. <laughs> yes. Kaboom. Uh, the median income for a household in the town of Marshville is $36,000. The annual median income for a family in that town is $42,000. So we are not living big in Marshville. Not living high on the hog. Uh, I don't think there's hogs to be high on. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Michelle. Marshville is the site of the Bull Weevil Festival, an annual street fair and carnival. It takes place every year in the fall. Hmm, okay. Hey, you hear that cheeseburger, uh, the Caseville Cheeseburger Festival got canceled? No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Man, All cherry right. festival, dude, out, out, out. well, out, yeah, it's gone, get... it's gone, it's burned, it's burned. Uh, well, uh, speaking of burning, I think I'm right here. Parts of the 1985 Oscar-nominated movie The Color Purple were filmed in Marshville. Was I feel Color like they burned purple. down somebody's house? Was that with Oprah? Was yes, Oprah in that? It was with Oprah. All right, good one. See, right. look at that. You know stuff. Oprah. Notable people from Marshville, North Carolina. Uh, Randy Travis. <laughs> no, and Casey and JoJo. Do you know who they are? Ah, uh, I know. They're R&B singers. They're members of the group Jodeci. Okay. Two, two, group, two different sets of brothers from Charlotte, North Carolina. And after years, they, they're like, oh, we're not doing that good. And the other group was like, we're not doing that good. So they joined forces and became Jodeci. Became Jodeci. Those are dudes? Yeah. Billboard Hot 100 single, Come and Talk to Me. All right, no. Come and talk yeah. to me, baby. Different song. You're uh, you're uh, talking about my pay grade there, bro. There you go. Yeah. Randy yes. Ray is the second of six children. Okay. Uh, his oh. mom, Bobby, is a textile factory worker, and his dad, Harold, was a uh, turkey and cattle farmer, a substitute teacher. He ran a meat route. Uh, he was a horse breeder. A quote from Randy Ray on his dad and horses, quote, My daddy can make a horse do just about anything you could ever expect to see a horse do, and some things you couldn't. That could be taken the wrong way. I'm that's why I just put the, saying. That's why I put the quote in there. Uh, and he owned a construction business, Treywick Construction, General Contractors, North Carolina. Is he, in an odd way, a half-brother of Sarah Jessica Parker? Maybe. <laughs> Miss Parker. <laughs> so nice of you to join. Now she's running away. Why, why do you do that every time? Well, somebody <laughs> else had a little sugar cube. Randy Ray and his brother Ricky were raised to respect recording artists and really rallied to refine their raunchous rhythm recitations. I can't believe you did that without having to do, uh, like, five takes. I did those all last night. Uh, So basically, their father really wanted them to pursue their musical talents, so he encouraged them to practice a lot. Yeah. He was a big fan of Hank Williams and George Jones and Lefty Frizzell. Okay. Episode pending. 1967, at the age of eight, Randy Ray begins playing the guitar and singing in his Church of Christ choir. Two years later, he and his brother began performing at local clubs and talent contests, calling themselves the Treywick Brothers. Another one of these kids that got brought up through the churches. Church singing system, yeah. man. It's it's a fruitful proving ground. Yeah, sure. That's where a lot of uh, singing happens on a very uh, uh, basic, I mean, everybody's doing it. Right. Yeah practice at all sorts of levels and they can't kick you out of the band it's a church (laughs) both of the brothers did have a wild streak so maybe they could get kicked out uh which resulted in ricky going to jail he got in a car chase and randy ray ran off to charlotte at the age of uh 16 
This was a contributing factor to Randy Ray dropping out of high school. He later becomes a juvenile delinquent, not that much later, and he was arrested for various offenses, including auto theft and burglary. Okay, we got a little crime early on in this one. I like that. There All you right. go. Stay in school, kids. Yeah. While well, I'm... or not, because there's Zoom. Well, yeah, uh, yeah that's we got true. Stay in Zoom, kids. In Zoom. While his brother's serving time in jail for a high-speed car chase, Randy Ray won a talent contest at a nightclub. Them darn Duke boys. He was at the Country City USA, a nightclub, in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a honky-tonk owned by this lady, Lib Hatcher. Hey, you know what we drove by the other day? Diamondback Diamondback Saloon. Yeah. I think it's still a thing. I mean, not now, but. We went to Diamond Steakhouse. Is that the same place? Where were you? No, it's on uh, 96 or 94. What am I thinking? 94. So if you're no, going 96. from here to the airport. Oh, 94. Yeah, and there's a Diamondback Saloon on the south side of the road. Big yellow awning. Huh. You don't remember that? I mean, I remember it, but I haven't been there. I just we oh. There's a steakhouse around here up in Brighton called Diamonds, and it's just very much the same thing. And I'm like, is that the same place? Oh, it's not what I'm thinking of, though. Well, Diamondback, this, huh? this is an old honky-tonk sort of country bar. There you go. A lot of line dancing going on. We got both kinds. You know, a lot of people with a... A pair of boots that they bought for going to the Diamondback Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> My feet hurt. Um, okay, so he's at Country City USA, and this lady, Lib Hatcher. Um, you're supposed to go Lib, huh? And I go, yeah, her real name's Elizabeth. They just call her Lib. Okay. Like, how, do, how do you get Lib out of Elizabeth? I'm like, I don't know. Ad Lib. Oh, nice. She's listed as, quote, an American artist. Uh, she meets Randy Ray when he's 17 and she's 37. So needless, wow. needless wow, okay. to say, <laughs> uh, is there is there some uh, amorous activity coming up? Here? Uh, Lib was impressed by Randy Ray and offered uh, him a regular gig at her bar as well as a job as a cook and another job. Like, Gave hey, him a, uh, a couple jobs. I really like, I really uh, like uh, the way you sing. Uh, you got like to out. offer you a job. She took an interest in the young singer. Let's just say that. Cougar. Uh, in the late 1970s, Randy Ray is working and singing at Country City, USA. In his late teens, Randy Ray has one more encounter with the law. At his hearing, the judge tells him that if he ever sees Randy back in this court again, he should be prepared to go to jail for a long, long time. Trying to set the, scare the young man straight at and an early it, age. It seems like it worked because Randy Ray is released into the guardianship of Lib, mm. who has <laughs> also co- coincidentally become his manager. And the two begin to focus full time on his music career. Oh, okay. Oh, there's nothing, nothing amorous here yet. Not, not yet. <clears throat> not in these cards, buddy. This is all above board so far. Okay. Just a nice thirty-some-year-old lady taking a young seventeen-year-old boy under her under wing as a guardianship. Age. Okay. And so, 1978, he begins recording for Paula Records. Uh, his first single with the label is called Dreamin'. It's released in April 78. It was not well received. I, I, I just want to go <clears throat> and say that I, I want to acknowledge, I think there's a double standard in our. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, okay. We're talking about this. Two dudes, just, you know, whatever. Some 40 some year old dudes, whatever we are. Yep. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Whatever. It doesn't matter. And, and we're just both kind of like giggling, like, oh, a 17 year old boy, a 30 you know, older lady. Yeah, cool. You're going to flip it now on me? Way to go! What kind of jobs he getting? And but if it was a young woman, like a young seventeen-year-old girl, and that's wrong. Like sick, sicko. That's that guy wrong. should be dragged down the streets and shot. Yep. yep. I don't. I I acknowledge it. I can't do a lot about it. Oh, um, one thing I do know <clears throat> is that Epstein did not kill himself. <laughs> anyway, continue. Uh, no, I'm just saying. I would like. Right? If we're giggling about this like two idiots, oh, it's total double standard. Basically, because we're idiots, a hundred percent double standard. Yeah. Right? It's it's actually probably pretty traumatic, and uh, I don't want. I did. I'm glad I was not uh, molested by a teacher in high school. Well, hell, I don't know. You say that, but we've had this before on other people too, like Rick James or J- James Brown or one of those guys is like, yeah, I'm not traumatized. Well, or if whatever. you were younger, Just but like, if you were dude. 17. Still, man, if I'm 17, I'm going to go after, like, 17-year-olds. I'm not looking at some 37-year-old lady. Uh. I, I think if there was a hot teacher in your school and you went to your buddies and said you, whether it happened or not and said you did anything, you'd get some high fives. <laughs> you'd get some high fives. I don't think those same high fives are be, being given amongst no. women when they tell them that some no. teacher did. I, 
Now, also from my care. perspective, yeah. when I was in grade school, I don't remember having hot teachers. Well, this is not grade honest. school. This is high school. Oh, high school. school. When I was in high school, let me rephrase. When I was in high school, I don't remember having hot teachers. You had one. One. Yeah. That's all it needs. That's I all got, it takes. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. We, there was I a, stand corrected. You're right. <laughs> there was this is just the one. We had a couple student teachers come through. I mean, they're, I mean, they're not much older than us at that age. At that, at yeah. the, I mean, in that area. The thing that baffled me is that when I was in college, everyone I met, like every super attractive girl was going to be a teacher. I'm like, what, 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 where were you when I was in high school, grade school? Like, I don't, I would have paid more attention. Yeah, yeah. Bunch of old dudes with mustaches just droning on. <laughs> Whatever, man. I got a mustache, Brian. Would you like me to drone on for you? I got oh, a wait. dance, I got a dance group you can join. All right. Uh, 1978. The music, uh, that record, Dreamin', uh, was the first single, Dreamin', was not well received. It didn't even, like, make the charts. That's how bad it was. Well, gotta, 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 gotta crawl before you can walk. Well, let's see if the second outing goes better. September 1978, so we got a little bit farther down the road. The second single, She's My Woman, is released. Okay, how'd she, how'd that so how'd I do? That spends four weeks at the Billboard Hot Country Singles Chart, peaking at 91. Ew, not we, that great. We cracked the top 100. Well, okay. It's a, mo- a step in the right direction. And more steps in, I don't know if it's the right direction, but Randy Ray moves in with Lib and her husband. Well, the plot thickens. This puts further strain on their already fragile marriage. Uh, yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, he's a boarder. He pays us $2 in rent and works at the restaurant. I got a lot of jobs for him. 1982, she eventually leaves her husband, and she and Randy Ray move to Nashville, Tennessee. Hmm. She manages the Nashville Palace nightclub, and uh, Randy Ray gets a job singing and cooking. Okay. During this time, an unlikely romance begins between the two. Uh, unlo- well. That's why I kept that word in there. All right. <laughs> unlikely, huh? Really? Yeah. Um, Didn't seem like a plan from the beginning? Sounds like this is going exactly as you planned. <laughs> Randy Ray's got a quote about it. Quote, I think we discovered how much we needed each other. Hmm. Or it. <laughs> well, during the early 1980s, Randy Ray was rejected by every major record label in Nashville, not once, but twice. Well, he's not giving up. This is the spirit that beat the Japanese, Brian. His early demo tapes were the ones criticized by record executives as being too country. I mean, you're country, but you're like a little too country. We don't, we, I don't want country, but I'm not like that much country. Today's country is not too country, is it? Uh, today's country is 80s pop. <laughs> or some of it's rap. Some of it's country and rap. It's crap. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I like some of it. Come on, do the two step and cowboy boogie. Should be I still can't get over Garth Brooks, Brooks coming back as strong as he did. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't figure Take it out. Take it to the left now and dip with it and go round and hip with it. Uh, you're about ready to punch. All Anybody right. would like to unsubscribe right now? <laughs> no, please no, leave a comment. Please. That is because Brian knew that whole song. Oh man! All right, all right. I like that song. Within a couple years, the pair independently releases his debut album under the name Randy Ray. Randy Ray. I'm Randy Ray, everybody, and I like writing rhymes and writing. I don't even know. The record was called Oh, Writing Records. Right, the record right, was called right, Randy Ray Live, and it was sold primarily in the Nashville Palace Bar. They had a table. The Palace Ballroom. Okay. Go, bu- go buy tape. I got a lot of tapes. Oh, it was tapes, wasn't it? <laughs> it probably was tape. 1980s, so yeah, it was a tape. 1985, thanks to Lib's uh, persistent efforts and the Randy Ray Live album, Warner Brothers is like, dude, let's get you an offer. I think you're ready to come up. You're so just about the right amount of country. Just you know, about we're looking the right, for. You got it figured out now. Oh. As part of the contract, label executives insist that they keep the romance between Lib and Randy Ray a secret, and he changes Stave's name to Randy Travis. Well, I think if you're a young person, boy or girl, this and you're is coming up what in, they did, right. you don't want, you want to be viewed as available. They told Elvis that yeah. he was single, and he's like, no, I got the Lisa Marie or whoever. Yeah, the, you don't want Priscilla. No, that's any, not. you want people buying um, your albums uh, using, their pa- using the brain in their pants. No, right, right, yeah. right, right. Well, it's like um, I was watching some show. This guy's trying to be a rapper, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm telling you, twelve year old girls are gonna love me. They're gonna want to marry me. I'm not gonna marry them because that would be wrong and sick. But they're gonna want to. They're gonna be like, I like that guy, and he's attainable, and so I want to be about it. And so that was like part of his pitch to the record company. Like, people like me and wanna 
you know, women want me and men want to be like me, that sort of old Dude, adage and stuff. And if you can I sell can it. I can score with 12-year-old girls all day long. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm just saying I could if I wanted to. I don't want to. Well, get your record I deal, buddy. Wanna, that's I'm that's kind the, of a big deal. That's what they're saying. So that's that's what you're telling Randy Ray. They're like, look, buddy, you got to keep it a secret. And Randy Ray is a weird. dumb name. And Randy Trawick is not famous. So we're going to call you Trawick, Bear, Tra- 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 Travis, Randy Travis. You have two first names now. Yeah, and welcome everybody to, can spell it. Welcome to the club. Uh, quote, on the other hand, unquote, is his first single for that label. On the other hand. On the other hand, is his first single for the label of Warner Brothers. It's released and climbed to number 67. Okay. Still still getting, still doing better. It was not well received, eh. though. They consider eh. that not a success. Eh, it's not Despite a... its lackluster performance, radio programmers liked Randy, though. And so his next single, 1982, which came out in... 1986. Now, this dude's just a Becomes tall, a top 10 hit. He's a tall beanstalk, con, kind of a long face, right? Am I thinking of the right guy? Yes tall, and no. I, I, I got him confused with... Hair. I got him... Nah, nah, that's him. But I also got him confused with Chris, Chris Isaac. So don't do that. There's a bit of an overlap in my brain on them, <laughs> yep, too. Yep. What a wicked thing you say. And Dude, uh, that video, I'm just saying. I don't know. Half what. the night last night, I'm writing these cards. I'm like, no, that's not the guy. That's the, that's the other guy. I don't, yeah. That's, I know that's not Randy Travis. No, but it's they not. Do look a lot, I think they look very much similar. At least that video of, <laughs> of that. Okay. And somehow, right. I think that gets us to. Just Sarah Jessica Parker with that guy. I could I could be wrong, but is yeah, that well, not Chris Isaac's attached to her in a way? May, maybe there's nineteen eighty. Oh, did cyclical. you hear the part about his uh, his single nineteen eighty two becomes a top ten hit? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He had a big yeah, one. Boom. He's on there. Nineteen eighty two, okay. which comes out in nineteen eighty six. Anyway, nineteen eighty six. Warner Brothers re releases that song. On the other hand, and uh, the re release becomes Travis's first number one single. Oh, they they just re-released it well repack i mean you know think about that they're like you're selling it out of a bar we have a much bigger distribution network i feel like we can promote it a little more we can get this thing to catch fire right okay Okay. so december 1986 uh randy ray becomes a member of the grand old opry wow he He, didn't even have to go through that uh what's that (laughs) hay wagon louisiana hay ride (laughs) wagon ride (laughs) that's all what is that the lusitania hay bucket what is what's that spit Spittoon, what are you? Is that is that straw or hay you got up there? Well, grass and straw and hay. Uh, live on a barn, get all three. What the hell's that saying? <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. About as good as they do. All right. So he's in the Grand Old Opry now. He did it. Didn't have to go through the hay ride. Yeah. 1987. The songs that were included on his major label debut are "Storms of Life," which produced another number one country single, "Digging Up Bones." I know that song. I Digging up bones. Uh, no Place Like Home. Don't know that song. No Place Like Home. There's no place like home. That's how it probably goes. Uh, which held the number two position on the Billboard Country Charts. So he's now he's a one and two and one and two. Yeah, he's and, every, so. everything's landing. April 87, Randy Ray's second album for Warner Brothers. is called Always and Forever. And it's accounted uh, for 14 singles. It's got, I'm sorry, for four singles. That's not 14 singles. It accounted for four singles, all of which hit number one on Billboard. Forever and Ever Amen, most popular song. Forever yeah, and yeah. Ever Amen. I Won't Need You Anymore. Uh, too Gone Too Long. And I Told You So. Okay. Forever and Ever Amen held the top position for three weeks. I went and this was in the mid, mid 80s. 87. Okay, so mid to late 80s. The, oh, the, I used to help my dad back then. Like we'd, he, in right. the summer, especially. Treyway Construction. He would. <laughs> He would go out. He was a you know kind of a home remodeler dude, builder guy, jack yep. of all trades, and we'd go to houses and put like a new kitchen counter in or new tubs or whatever. And I just helped my dad, and we'd listen to some country station. And I remember hearing these songs back then. You know, a lot of that, that, this, and whatever George Jones, and just listening. It'd be on the background, and Paul Harvey would come on, oh, and yeah. the Paul Harvey show would come on, and that's you know, and then after Paul Harvey, I'd go right back to this. Ah, yeah. Well, there you go, Paul Harvey. Paul what, was his, what was his thing? Good. Day. And that's that. the rest of the story. I, he Harvey? said, yeah, and that, but I think at the end he did, at, he did the rest of the story. It was a bit sidebar from a show, I think. 
don't remember. I was a little before I was paying good. attention to that yeah. stuff. Or something. Good. All right. Well, good night. maybe that's something that our <clears throat> listeners can fill us in on. Good night and good luck. Hit us up on all the social medias. Uh, crime and music. 1987. Um, Always and Forever wins Randy Ray his first Grammy for Best Male Country Vocal Performance. So, I wonder what happened to his brother. Ricky? Yeah. He's in jail. Still? I don't know. It's life crime, revitism. I'm sure probably that's what just, happens. Probably his, li- his brother's just hand him some money Sorry, every Michelle. once in a while. Possibly. Yeah. July 1988. Old 8x10, his third album, is released. 8x10. Um, that's what he called it. Uh, it's got three singles on there. Honky Tonk Moon, Deeper Than a Holler, and is it still over? Uh, what's 8x10 refer to, do you know? 8x10. Well, I, 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 it did not say. I it's not a 2x4. Old 8x10. Isn't that a room? 8x10. What, you want to play some dodgeball in here? That's not big enough for dodgeball. You know that. Uh, two, two U's, two me's. It's not nearly big enough for dodgeball. It's not even big enough for squash. You want to you play some <clears throat> racquetball in here? I think you play chess. Eight by ten? Uh, eight by ten room. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Randy Ray wins his second. Oh, I'm sorry. All of those songs, Honky Tonk Moon, Taller and Ho- Deeper Than Holler, and Is It Still Over, all reach number one. Randy Ray wins his second Grammy. He's everything's everything on the number one chart. It just gets taken over by the next Randy Travis song. And pretty much he's outdoing himself. Okay. Uh, he wins Grammy for Best Country Vocal Performance on this album. 1990, two more singles are released from No Holding Back. That's another thing. It's go- And his girlfriend's got to be like 55 by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get there. Uh, Hard Rock Bottom of Your Heart, which became Travis's longest lasting number one single at four weeks. Do you think she was collecting her Medicare or her, uh, her, her Social, Social Security? Security? Yeah, possibly. And He Walked on Water, which peaked at number three. Okay. Now he's going down. Yep. And since we had a little dip, we're going to take a little break right here, too. And and when we come back, we're going to talk more Randy Travis. Can everybody. you just lead us in a break with uh, singing the rest of that song? I got a little. Sh- I drink I'm boogie and boogie, boogie, boogie. No. No. But equally, That's a hard no. <laughs> equally bad singing. My high school band, 21 Days. This is recorded in uh, our rhythm guitar player's backyard. Who who is that? Paul. Paul. Oh, good guy. Oh, it's the thing with my. He's a real good guy. Yeah. This is not the edited clip I thought it was. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Did this get him all the laid? Oh, yeah, actually it did. That's the worst part about it. was your break awesome what'd you what'd you do i read a text from my buddy he's back with his old girlfriend are we happy about this i he he knows he 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 he's not does he a listener does he know is this no happen? he's oh, not okay, he's not go. as much in love with her as i think he's the in idea love of her with it <laughs> oh well there's that too i mean well even when he started going out there originally he's like i'm gonna marry her i hate myself for her. i'm gonna marry her it, oh, but I'm just too damn selfish. I can't marry anybody, and they because he's he knows he's selfish. He and he's all he, right. Well, and they're back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they are. With that, uh, let's pick up in 1991. Our buddy Randy Ray, he and Lib come forward with their relationship, and they're married in a private ceremony. Okay, so they're finally out and proud about this. Being was married. the time. I got her, her, her. <laughs> <laughs> That's the emojis I want from our listeners. Send me those. <laughs> and when I say they're back together. Eggplant, eggplant, peach, water yeah, drops. Yeah. What? A lot of water drops in that text. I don't even know what that means. Bloop. It means bloop. Oh, gotcha. Bloop. Randy Ray holds the top of the charts and begins to slip a little bit after Clint Black 
and especially Garth Brooks appear on the country music scene. Yeah, Clint Black, I think, is a Randy Travis sort of vibe. I don't think Garth Brooks was, because Garth Brooks was kind of more of a, he had a lot of slower ballads, but he had some fun party songs, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think Randy yeah. Travis had a lot of fun party songs. There's not a lot of fun party songs. But, and Clint Black, the same. You know, not a lot of... No, I'm not a Clint Black Rock guy. and roll and fun party songs. Not like, you know, Garth well, Brooks. Who I still can't believe. Whatever. Good for him. Good for him. Good for him, man. <laughs> well, nevertheless, Randy Ray uh, never fell away completely. His album has continued to achieve gold status throughout the 90s. He's usually cracked... The top 10 for most of his stuff. 1998, he wins his third Grammy for Best Country Collaboration. Um, actor Patrick Swayze contributed backing vocals on the track, I Did My Part. Huh. That Patrick. is not what he won the Grammy for. <laughs> There's Swayze. no confusion. Swayze does not have a Grammy. Uh, there were others on the album, like Vince Gill, Alison Krause, Melba Montgomery. So it's basically an album of uh, duets. I, I went to see Vince Gill. Oh, yeah? This dude, I didn't know the guy that well. But he said that there were some girls going. That and is all you needed back well, in the day like, for hey, you. He's like, hey, you want to go see Vince Gill? No. And there's girls going. Yeah, okay. Well, it gets It's worse than that. <laughs> the girls were not. Uh, they were into me as about as much as I was into them, all right? And the reason I wasn't into anybody <laughs> and they right. weren't into me all is right. because I thought I was going to a rock concert. Oh, I thought I was yeah. going to like a heavy metal concert. Vince Gill. Yeah, no, Vince Neal. All right. I might have gotten a couple people mixed <laughs> up here. And all of a sudden, here, here I am. I'm like wearing a, like an old, uh, old awesome. Rush t-shirt or some crap. Yeah. Walking in there. Leather, got, leather like, studded bracelet on. Boot, with they, no sleeves and a shirt. Oh! They all got cowboy boots and vests and cowboy. I'm like, huh. Come on, dude. Who's boots. opening for this guy? Uh, <laughs> is it Garth Brooks? <laughs> All right. Ben's, Ben's here for Motley Crue and uh, Shania Twain. Is, uh, <laughs> do they not tour together? I, uh, uh, I, I go see Shania. I know I know who she is. I would I totally go see Shania Twain. Yeah. Kidding me? Yeah. Legs for days. You see, you see those legs make a complete ass of themselves as they go up. It's amazing. But um, ball. <laughs> uh, actually, Shania Chain, Twain has a thing about her legs, and I don't understand why. She's a lovely, attractive woman. Quit she, hiding your legs. Huh. Yeah, no, she's had a, she had a thing in uh, like People or something like that about it. Like, I'm always self-conscious. Read a lot of people, do ya? When I'm waiting in line at the grocery store, yeah. Can't touch that stuff. That's covering COVID. Oh, God. What do I do now? Uh, Randy Ray's career, well, speaking of oh, God, Randy Ray's career from 2000 onward is dominated by Christian country music. Is that where he went? Yeah, he switches over to, like, country and Christian gospel stuff. I, I suppose if that's maybe where your heart's at and you know you're kind of on the decline, might as well, right? He has received more Grammy Awards for his gospel albums than his country albums. And I've told you country album Grammys like three or four times now. Yeah, well, okay. Well, dude, he was a big fish in a little pond. Well, that's probably true. Yeah, that's true. Selected songs from the gospel albums also made their way onto a two part finale of TV's Touched by an Angel with Michael Landon. Correct. Yeah. It featured Randy Ray in character. He's an actor now. He acts. Oh, I can act and yeah, sing. Just like uh, Chris Christopherson. He's a dual threat. December 2002, speaking of duels, Randy Ray's most successful venture. That was referring to the twos in 2002. Randy's most successful venture in Christian country music was the song Three Wooden Crosses, which is super fucking depressing. <laughs> okay. It, it reached number one. Well, dude, he's like, driving on the highway, come to the intersection. Semi trucks don't stop as quick as you would reckon. You're like, oh, God, what's happening? <laughs> Like, three of them were in the car, and then the car was one, and then three of them and a tree all became undone. I'm like, what the fuck? So, yeah, you just described, <laughs> there's three wooden crosses on that turnpike now. I'm like, what the hell? All what? right, thanks. Bring the uh, yeah, entire mood down here, bro. <laughs> so, it's not me. It's Randy Ray. Well, you you decided to invoke Randy Ray I in suppose your I did. podcast The here. chant of Randy Ray brings people down. God. Where's that? So uh, the song was named Song of the Year by the Country Music Association in 2003 and in 2004. Enough. Well, it was enough. It won a Dove Award for the Gospel Music Association as Country Song of the Year also. So it people love the depressing Crosses by the Side of the Highway song. Hey, I switched soap. You like the Dove? No, I ah. tried the Dove. I went from... Uh, no Dove. I couldn't get my... Um, when I was going shopping for soap... I couldn't get dial, so there Not was. I had. I know I've had Dove 
Yeah, at the house, and it's too perfumey. It smells unscented. Like a, smells like a grandmother. I um, use, I use <clears> unscented <throat> Dove bar soap because my skin smelling grandmother. That's a point of reference. So uh, I was going to question you yeah, about how no. you had that. What's what's the range? But then I got uh, Irish Spring. Oh, I don't think we talked about this, did we? No. Yeah, Irish Spring. Do you you remember those old commercials? I was just thinking of those commercials. They were like. Kind of gave you, I mean, before you knew what a boner was, you kind of learned from maybe watching the Irish Spring commercials. Oh, uh, uh, there's the a little summer, cheeky, a little cheeky commercials, you know, I think. You'd be watching uh, uh, The Price is Right, and they go to commercial, and there's an Irish Spring, there's some, some dude like showering in the woods, and some ladies <laughs> come up on a horseback, and woo, woo. Yep. And the next thing you know, I don't know where he gets that buck knife at, but then he peels off a big Just, hunk of soap. Yep, carving off your You like, don't have a knife in you in the shower? Like, pr- like, I guess they're proving to the audience that it's not hollow. I. <laughs> I don't know. It's solid. Look at that. And it's they're like, all speaking in like an Irish. With the Irish accent. Yeah. And then the whistle. Oh, I love me Irish spring. Ah, oh, cha cha cha. <laughs> like Lucky Charms. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anyone. I don't know. No, it's okay. The Irish apparently are like the last people we can make fun of without them getting offended. It's the Italian. Me and Mario. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Continue. His name is Luigi. So you got a oh, double word. Of course award. it is. Yeah, you got a double word for the, the, using good soap. Um, the albums Rise and Shine and Worship and Faith earned Randy Ray his fourth and fifth Grammys in 2003 and four, respectively. Where Where's that lady at? Lib? Yeah. She should be here. All right. She's showing up. Like she's know she's more managing that. the club. Um, he took home an award for Best Southern Country or Bluegrass Gospel Album in 2003 and four. Man, he had a killer run in the gospel stuff. There. Man, he's got a, he's got a big, uh, big trophy case about at home. His turn to Christian music was, quote, fruitful, producing a series of good heartfelt records, yet they also had a nice side of putting commercialism on the back burner, as gospel albums were made without charts in mind. Well, I think, I, I don't know this, but I, 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 it sounds like this guy had hit the top, was at the top. He was definitely at the top. And maybe right before someone else was coming in to take that away from him, he was like, Good. Yep. Thank you. Release me from that. I'm gonna go do this. Is kind of where my heart's at. This is yeah, where I want to do this. This is, this is what I'd like to do. And I don't need any more money. I don't need any more fame. I got all the Grammys I can handle. That's um, a pretty good move. I'll go do this. Honestly, if you're number one on the charts, and rather than just see a decline, which will happen, there's always gonna be a new number one. He just took the side door over into the Christian songs. But and so it's like you went up and then left. You know, you're like, ah, and I'm off to this side now. So I didn't decline. I went out on top, which is hard to do. But it'd be interesting to look back at who were on the charts on the country or the Christian charts at the time. Oh, yeah. No. When mainstream. all of a sudden, like, uh, you know, you're, you're like number two, almost maybe you're number one in the Christian charts. And then Randy freaking Travis Randy. comes in and just like totally blows up your spot can you imagine that bunch of christian artists oh god damn it randy travis <laughs> what the damn you randy damn you to hell october 29 2010 randy ray files for divorce after 19 years of marriage with his wife and manager lib citing quote irreconcilable differences <laughs> meaning man she's looking old yeah yeah i was gonna say what so they did get married, I guess. Did we not say that? In- no, I said that. Yeah, Remember, okay. They, that, they, 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 got, they didn't want to talk about right, it. Right. It was okay. hidden. All right. So do they have any, like, kids and stuff? Or was she already through menopause? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> September 26, 2011. Uh, Randy faints in the middle of a song at the Crystal Heart Gala. It's an annual benefit for the Hughley Memorial Medical Center in Fort Worth, Texas. And he's up there singing and playing. The and, Hughleys? Uh, the H- <laughs> yeah, it's for D.L. Hughley. And uh, his medical center, quote, Mr. Travis has been struggling with laryngitis that resulted from chronic allergies and had multiple over-the-counter allergy medicines, his doctor said. And that messed up his cords? I guess so, man. Yeah, okay. So uh, he was on his tour bus, his vital signs were all stable, and he goes home to recover. So basically he just fainted. Ah, blank card, what do I do? Well, uh, Ah! I know it. At this point, he's probably older than we are now, but I was not as old as his wife. Oh. I was out playing some uh, baseball with the kid, and he was pitching to me. And so I'm kind of <laughs> like, you know, catch. I'm behind the plate, and he's on the pitcher's mound. He's pitching, and I'm catching whatever. You're actually down in the squat. Oh yeah, I'm down there. I'm oh, doing, doing oh, the thing. good for you. I don't dumb it down. I do, I I can still you, I can still ball, dude. Been I, serious about ball. Serious. I can left hand, right hand bat. Just ball till you fall. Need both the same badness. So, um, 
I, I, I got, you know, time to stand up. Every once in a while, you stand up. <laughs> I stood up, and I got a little, I got a little flush. I got a little dizzy. I'm like, Whoa. a little lightheaded. <laughs> standing up too quick. <laughs> Easy, big fella. <laughs> 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 whoa, whoa, there's little Finn up here. I mean, you're a tall fella. I'll give you that. But Yeah, uh, getting old. Woo. And blood. Slow it down a little that, bit. That man. old pumper's got to work a little harder. That's hilarious. Got a lot more mass to deal with. Well, speaking of this in athletic events and ventures, February 5th, 2012. Do you remember this? February 5th, 2000. Is that Super, Super Bowl 46. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. Bunch of old guys trying to get up too quick. <laughs> The Giants, Giants and the Patriots, remember what happened? No. Giants sneak past the Patriots with the 21-17 score. Madonna was a halftime show. Madonna. Uh, yeah, yeah, they all running together for me. I don't know. What? What? It's Super Bowl. I thought you were a sports fan. You're I'm, a baseball I'm guy, I guess. I'm not as much into the sports as I'm into my, yeah, no. Eh. I feel like Football COVID. Football throws fun. It's I feel fun. like COVID taught us that we can live without all sports except for MMA. So uh, I'm, I'm good, good with that. Baseball catches good. You watch any of those UFC fights they're putting on when there were no sports? I caught a clip of you did even no. you. Oh, I was like, oh, wow! Man, just on like the Facebook, it goes scroll through. Oh yeah, and it was without uh, audience. Yeah, that's what they were yeah. doing. They were doing ten thousand seat like arenas with no audience, and you could hear the audio from the fight. Yes, and it made you appreciate what it sounds like when not even a solid hit gets thrown it's a smack all the same that's what they said they were like the most sort of not jarring but the most noticeable thing was the sound of the impact because they don't usually the combatants yeah they don't mic up a typical uh well you wouldn't hear it yeah you you don't mic. well no and when you're just in the in the in the training you're training and you're in your gym or you're sparring or whatever and you're hitting people and stuff oh yeah you're not usually watching that back from a extremely mic'd up situation all mic'd out but they put that up all the bells and whistles oh, and yeah. microphones and cameras without a crowd, yeah. that, uh, crowd noise, and all of a sudden you're hearing like, and they're not even oh. really hitting each other yep. hard. Well, you would consider hard right. in a fight like right, that, right, right, right. But you can appreciate it's still pretty hard. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. And then one of the one of the weird side effects from that too is uh, some of the commentators are like current fighters and like some guys hold belts and they're champions. And they're doing their comedy like, you know what he should do is uh, like go to the left, do a duck under and all that. And the fighters, because there's no crowd, can actually hear him. So they started listening to this one dude. <laughs> this guy, Daniel Cormier, is like the heavyweight champion or whatever. And he's just like, yeah, I know what you need to do. is." Duck. And the guy's like, all right, thanks, man. And, like he's making adjustments in his fight from what the commentators are saying. Well, and he actually, the dudes and like women are winning because of that. They're like, ah, hey, he said, go to this and do that. And so I did. And hey, here we are. You know. So in the same, in the same vein of our sports talk somehow we've gotten off topic a little it's bit. what we it's what we do this well, is our niche did you hear, sidebar did you hear what the nba is doing no not at all dude tell me this is not the coolest thing if you're an nba player whatever okay they're I'm gonna open. play they're, they're gonna play basketball games i'm tall fella. they're gonna play some basketball games all right they're gonna go all go through a ton of screening before they play it's getting sure. like multiple COVID tests, whatever. Sure. Them, their agents, their family, their they're teams. They're super athletes, they're, dude. They're, they're ev- fine. They're everybody. Everybody that would be associated with this basketball team, the doctors, the trainers, the coaches, everybody gets tested and screened and they stay like quarantined a little bit. Yep. And then they all go to Disney. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. They got the run of the Disney. <laughs> yeah. They all go there. They're going to play like yep. 50, 60 yep. games, whatever they're going to play. And they're all going to get their own hotel suites and rooms. They can tour all the park, all the animals. Wow. There's nobody at Disney right now. No. Yeah. Wow. And they got all these high four-star, five-star restaurants they're eating yep. at, playing golf, going yep. fishing. There's some, like, other things. They can get boats and do things. This is, Dude. And, and play a little basketball. Whatever. I they're, guess. It, it's an all-inclusive. This should all they should film it like <laughs> not the basketball part, the Disney part. But I want to see the behind the scenes of Empty what these Disney? people are doing. Right, and, and I'm thinking about I'm like this would be awesome. I mean, maybe awesome. I would never go to Disney in, in a million years because of the crowds. But right, this way I absolutely would. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they should make a bit of a like actually documented reality TV a little bit. Just show me the behind the scenes of what these people are doing. And let me live through their eyes a little bit. It would be fun. Me, let me bring. Uh, I started thinking a little bit more. Basketball <laughs> we're, players. We're in depth. Basketball players are kind of known for womenizing. Are, Just a little. Are they gonna like ship some? Wilt Chamberlain. Some 
Into Hotties Disney? Hotties with bodies in. Too, I, I think they might work at Disney already, like some of the show performers and whatnot. Yeah, you're like, hired. You're hired. You know, there's going to be some uh, wiki mermaids. There's going to be some extra jobs you're going to have to do. A lot of jobs. You're big on jobs today, aren't so you? So many jobs. <laughs> there's a visual. There's a couple. <laughs> oh, you did the thing. Ah, that's a shake way. That's, <laughs> that's a shake way, No, way, this, uh, this is champagne. I'm really happy. Ah, <laughs> just, you know, like they do in the NASCAR. Ah. But that sounds cool. Keep hitting the mic stand with well, glasses. We were talking about the Super Bowl, and I brought that up because Giants and Patriots. Madonna. Giants Patriots. Right. Yep, the Giants sneak past the Patriots, which doesn't really happen. Pat- Patriots are pretty much a dynasty. Mm-hmm. And Used so, February six, two thousand and twelve, Randy Ray, fifty two years old, was found drinking an open bottle of wine in front of the Sanger Baptist Church in Sanger, Texas. He was arrested for public intoxication. He was arrested for public intoxication and was booked at the Denton County Jail where he received a misdemeanor citation before he was released a few hours later. A quote from Randy Ray says, quote, I apologize for what resulted following on the evening of celebrating the Super Bowl. I'm committed to being responsible and accountable and apologize for my actions. He just, so, gave, a, he just gave a long-winded, my bad. My bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Giants beat the Patriots, man. I was in a parking lot, had a bottle of wine. My Woo! Bad. You know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, there's video on the interwebs if you want to watch it. It's you can watch him get picked up for that. Uh, April 11, 2012. Ex-wife and manager sues Randy Ray for uh, severing their professional relationship, accusing him of breaching their managerial contract five months early. Like, all right, you can break a contract, but you're she a little early. She just wanted some more money. Right. I'm sure she did a lot of work. I'm sure she was a. It, Integral. Lib, his manager of 30 years, said, quote, he had a large truck and armed guards and several other men show up at the office and remove practically all the property and business records from her custody. Oh, well, I guess. <laughs> hard separation. That's a hard no. Randy Ray insists there is no truth to the allegations, and he says, quote, it is unfortunate that it has come to this. We believe the lawsuit lacks merit, and we have legal defense to her claims. Poor lady. She can't even, she probably doesn't even remember half the crap that happened. <laughs> What's happening? What's going on? Come what? over and pet my cat. Oh, who is the people with the truck? May 29th, 1912. Let's try again. That was a UPS truck, ma'am. May 29th, 2012, Randy Ray files a counterclaim against Lib's lawsuit, insisting he owes nothing to her because she divulged personal and confidential information about him that damaged his reputation and harmed his career. Did she say he had a little wiener? I did not find anything that said that. And his wiener is so tight. He also alleges Lib cheated on him by submitting reimbursement requests for first-class travel, expenses, and uh, the camp that he had, his lawyers are like, that was intentional and reckless. Because she she wanted to make a couple extra grand. There you go, Yeah. yeah. August 7, 2012, less than six months after his arrest for public intoxication, Randy Ray is busted in North Texas on suspicion of driving while intoxicated. That's good. After crashing his Trans Am in a construction zone. The real crime is that he's driving a Trans Am. <laughs> That's why I went back and put it in Trans Am because it used to say car, and I, was, I found out it was a Trans Am. It's like, you're Randy Travis, you're driving a Trans Am. <laughs> Knight eh, Rider was a big thing. That's true. That's yeah. kind of, you're right. I stand corrected in 2012. Uh, he is found naked at the scene with blood alcohol twice the legal limit. He's laying in the middle of the street. Naked after he crashed his car? Trans Am, yes. I, I've, I've. What? I've driven drunk. I've, dr- I've driven drunk. I've driven naked. I'll tell you that. I've never driven naked. I, I was drunk coming home from a party and I decided to get naked. I will, I will tell you that. I was drunk. I shouldn't have been driving. What? I don't know. It was hot. What? What I that's the part I I feel that my kid I don't have any connect I don't get uh, why you get ah uh, like you know what it's hot in here I'm hot I'm sweaty I'm gonna get naked so I, I was walking around in in just this pair of shorts last night and no shirt in my backyard there you go kind of drunk <laughs> were you watering your lawn because no the guy. I was uh, I had a flashlight I was looking oh, for my God. cat it was one in the morning you're a meme oh my no, God. my cat got out <laughs> and I normally wouldn't give two shits. But there was a, a, a rabbit nest in our yard, and our cat art isn't usually supposed to get out. But he did get out, and he killed one of the little baby bunnies. Oh. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm now chasing my cat around my freaking yard in my neighbor's backyard. And all I'm thinking is, if I saw me do this right now as one of my, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. 
Yeah, and then and then my wife got home super late because she had a late meeting last night for uh, work, and she actually got into the house while I was in the backyard, so I didn't see her get home. And then she's in the house, and I'm coming now around to the front yard with the flashlight, Uh-oh. and I open the garage door with the garage door opener out of my van, and then Sarah comes out the front door and she's just like, "What are you doing? <laughs> like, it's one thirty in the morning at this point, one in the morning, whatever it was," and she's. She's, I'm there, no shirt on. I got my shorts on. I got my flip flops on and a flashlight, just like <laughs> shining it into the bushes and under the vehicles. I'm looking for the cat. She goes, and why? You got a baby bun. Oh, okay. I'm Con- trying to find a cat. Continue. Yeah. Nope. I'm with you. All right. Well, uh, much like yourself, Randy is out late at night and he's not wearing much clothing. No clothing to be specific. All right. All right. Cops wheel up on him. And uh, they try to arrest him. He takes off running. Well, he's got that tiny little, tiny little wiener flapping back and well, forth. Well, what do you, what do you grab? Like a little golf clap. <laughs> Just smack him back and forth on his thighs. Um, he takes off running, <laughs> and you can actually hear it in the video. The cops, is he running? And the other cop goes, Ah, oh, he's running, Mr. Travis, Mr. Travis, <laughs> do you mind? Uh, I'll go get him. <laughs> the, the, the cops are super nice in this in this video. You can watch it all online. It's hilarious. I'm sorry, what's that, Mr. Travis? They get him in the car. He's like, I'm going to kill you. You're going to die in the rooms oh, of hell. <laughs> I have seen that. I saw that. The police Are, officer's like, really, Mr. Travis? I'm going to die in the rings of hell? He's like, um, you don't understand the people I know. I know some mafioso types. They're going to come get you. And then it's he like, apologized the next day. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, sure. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I was drunk. So Randy is arrested for a DWI, a misdemeanor, and retaliation, a felony, because he was threatening and fighting the officers while naked. Not that the naked has to do with it, but just fighting officers. It's got a lot to do with it, man. (laughs) Randy Ray also walked into a convenience store earlier that night, not wearing any clothes and asking for cigarettes. So it's just like, hey, excuse me, uh, do you have any cigarettes? I don't get the naked thing. Are you Randy I Travis? I don't get the naked thing. Yes, and I'm having a nick fit. I need some cigarettes, please. All right, take these and and leave. You're going to have to go. Um, yeah, it says no shirt, no shoes, no service. Nothing about no pants. I <laughs> don't even know what your own sign says. I'm Randy Travis. Uh, he's released after paying his $21,500. Uh, how do you say that? $21,500 bail. That's how you say it. That's how you say it. Um, in his memoir, Randy Ray says that he didn't drink too much alcohol and was repeatedly reported that he only had two glasses of wine. He's like, I only drank two glasses of wine that were like this. Yeah, big. right. I know, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, in an attempt to get some sleep, he also took an Ambien. Those those can fuck some people up. There it is. Those, which, that's not everybody. Off. You had some issues. Didn't you take one? And I get, didn't. Yeah. That set some... off an unfortunate chain of events. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's weird. It's like... You don't, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, you're not awake, but you're not dreaming. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like you're in this gray zone of consciousness. You're like, this can't be real. I'm going to take my clothes off because this Maybe isn't real. Maybe that explains real. everything. It really might. You, There's a bunch of ambient stories, man. You gave me a sleeping pill when I went to Australia. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the plane. You right. know, like, try yeah, to yeah, sleep. Yeah, it's yeah, a long plane circadian ride. Circadian rhythms, sleep. get in the zone. So, yep. on, the, on the way there... I, I, I didn't, I didn't need to, I just, I just slept. I could sleep on a plane really, you know, just kind of like, boom, sleep. There you go. And that was a short plane ride, really. <clears throat> but on the way back, I'm like, screw this. You know, time changes were extreme one way and not as extreme the other. The Makes way sense. You, you go out, you yeah, know, yeah. you have to math, I'm not doing that here. So I popped, I popped that sleeping pill. It kept me wide awake. That's what I was just going to yeah, say. I, I, I'm, I was just like. Go to sleep the whole time. Couldn't go to sleep. It's just those generic little blue like sleep aids that you get at Meyer, but like one of them wide awake made me all jittery. Two of them sleepy. Three of them wide awake. Four of them you're dead. So you just got to really be careful on that and what you're doing. <laughs> Don't but that's, take four. Right. This there's a whole thing with like anesthetization. I guess would be the word, right? Like controlling your consciousness. Nobody knows what they're doing, man. Like, you're just shutting off your brain. Like, what parts and what chemicals are doing what? And who knows? <laughs> so he's on an Ambien, and he flipped out. And a couple glasses like, of wine, I don't even Ambien. Know. Right. Couldn't find his drawers anywhere. Yep. All right. Rogan has a great bit on it, if you ever see Joe Rogan's bit, talking about, like, he was in a hotel, and the fire alarms went off, so they evacuated the hotel. And he's like, you could see this select group of people 
that were just like in this daze and he's like i didn't figure it out till like weeks later like oh these are people taking sleep aids and ambient and stuff like that they're just yeah. like walking around like uh, especially like, in a hotel like their eyes were open but they were still sleeping and so i i remember waking my brother up when he was still asleep he'd be kind of walking around the house but he's still i mean his eyes are oh, open sleepwalker yeah he's, yeah so you had to wake him up slow you just slap now, him in the face get up nick now he just he just gets up swinging if you know it. <laughs> don't go wake him up he's got a gun with he'll him. hit you in the nut <laughs> just the one <laughs> july all, 7 that's all, 2000 that's all, that's all you need it's true i have protected myself by tucking my three-piece between my legs and your nut shots are not viable on me anymore july 7 2013 um randy ray's admitted to dallas hospital for viral cardiomyopathy unless i'm behind you <laughs> hoof is a hoof on July 10th, Randy Ray suffers a stroke. Five days later, he underwent successful brain surgery. Afterward, uh, he enters physical therapy, but the stroke left him without the ability to speak or sing. Yeah. yeah as far as that goes, him. that's that'd yeah. be the worst thing for you, right? Um, yeah, October yeah. six. Well, okay. Well, one up in me, thanks, buddy. October 16, 2016, after three years of therapy and rehabilitation, Randy Ray surprises fans when he appears at his induction to the Country Music Hall of Fame. He goes out and uh, he walks on stage by himself, re- briefly says a statement, and sings Amazing Grace. Oh, then, wow. Then he leaves. All right. Amazing Grace, who is the chick? Why do we say your name before we eat? And I'm out of here. 2015, he uh, releases a compilation album, on the other hand, uh, all the number ones. So literally, just put all the own. number ones. Yeah. As you can imagine, it was really well received. Well, how many people in this world could ever do that? What do you got? Like the Beatles, maybe Elvis, Michael yeah. Jackson. There's a handful. Madonna. Yeah, Madonna. Just all number one songs. Randy Travis, Garth Randy Brooks. Travis. Still can't figure it out. Uh, let's see here. It even returned him to the country music album charts in 2017, two years after its initial release. So it stuck around for a while. This record of number ones. Well, I wonder if that's when um. Oh, you said 2017? Yeah. Well, I mean, the iTunes iTunes put a blip on a few weird radars. Oh, for sure. It changed yeah. the game. When, when, you, when all of a sudden you can go get some good old music again, because you couldn't find some stuff at the store, well, it's on, then you put it on the iTunes, one movie comes out, next yep. thing you know, Danger Zone's a good song again. Highway to... That's true. Yeah, they put Top Gun on Netflix, and everybody's back buying, uh, what was his name? Um kenny loggins kenny loggins music there you go all right uh speaking of nowadays early 2020 randy ray releases precious memories hymns and gospel favorites going back to the gospel it's a live recording from the 2003 performance of uh, randy ray recorded at the cavalry assembly of god church in orlando florida i bet that's a big church it's got 12 songs on it um it was recorded before he had a stroke well, of course i didn't know why i put that in there I figured. He has recorded 20 studio albums, charted more than 50 singles on the Billboard Hot Country charts, including 16 that reached number one. He is considered a pivotal figure in the history of country music. We got a quote from Randy Ray, Randy Travis himself. Quote, you know, I think you have to sound right singing whatever it is that you sing. Randy Travis, ladies and gentlemen. So hard. You wanted your, you wanted your uh, rim shot, yeah. There you go. What'd you think, of Randy Travis? Uh, yeah, he was a docile old man. He didn't do too many bad things. Sounds like he was a little bit of a rabble rouser when he's young. Just when he was drinking, he has probably got some issues. But otherwise, just yeah. a nice country boy. Just, I, I did like go. the way he transitioned to gospel. I think that was good uh, play. That was a good play. That was very um, uh, well, I'll think of the word later. That was graceful. Very, there ah, it is. Hey, nailed it. nailed it. Very graceful. It was grace in the religious movement. That's that's yeah. new. Um, so you like that he didn't like. There was no spiral down. They're like, oh, that sucks. He didn't and, diddle oh, any little didn't, kids. He didn't hit um, it. He didn't hit his wife. That's your minimum requirement: is not diddling no kids diddling. or uh, domestic I, abuse. I honestly, I appreciate that. Honestly, I I think there's a lot of situations where I would. I, I, I wouldn't hate somebody as much for killing somebody, like shooting somebody, as I would for diddling little kids. I get that. Yep. I mean, if you're shooting somebody, a lot of times, you got a good reason. I mean, it may not be right to do, but, you know, they were 
They got a beef with you or yeah, whatever. Yeah, something led up to it. Well, you're diddling kids. I had, you know, you know, I don't like. Don't uh, do that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and hit, hit your woman. Don't do that. No. No. And it's not to say that. Yeah, just don't do don't it. Don't do that. No, just, 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 just don't. Don't. Well, no. since we have avoided domestic abuse, that brings us to another and uh, close of another crime in music. And so if you guys are so inclined, go to iTunes and leave us a review if you would. I would really like it if someone would leave a uh, seven star review. Oh, a seven star review. I was just going to say some emojis, like, you know, see if oh, we can decipher. It's ice cream. It's chocolate ice cream. OK, everybody knows that. <laughs> There's a whole entire world of emoji meanings that the kids got. Oh, yeah. It's like some, you got to have a, a cipher to figure it out. Oh, dude. Yeah. There's Ch- stuff. Cherry, I mean, cherry, water droplet. Oh, there's, no, nah, I go way rider. deeper than that. Second way place deep. metal. I don't yep. even know what I'm saying. All right, good show. Man. I like it. Great it was show. good to see you. I'm second glad. one back in the, I'm second one back so in pumped. the So pumped. Guys, studio. we are going to be back here for uh, more episodes. We're actually going to go out in the field. We got the pontoon cast coming up this summer. I swear to you that's going to happen. Um, hey, uh, you got to take a picture of the studio and put it on the uh, internet. I will. I'll put let people know. Put the headphones back yep. up on your little headphone hanger dealio. Take a nice little shot. We got shot. that. Do you want to take your name with you? I got I got copies. You can have your name. No, you might need that for more headphones. All right. There you go. More All right. headphones. All right, everybody. Please reach out to us. Leave us a speak pipe. Go to crimeandmusic.com and uh, hit the button there. Leave a little recording so Ben and I can hear your lovely voices and you listen to us. We want to listen to you. So hit us up on the uh, social medias, Crime and Music, anywhere you do social media. Other than that, it would help us out greatly if you would share with your friends. Be like, hey, check these guys out. I like it. You might like it, too. Since hey, I said that. The speak pipe. Just go to our website. Hit one button and say dumb things. Start talking. That's what we do. Speak pipe. Speak pipe. So uh, on that note, we'll see you next time. And uh, words of wisdom I picked up a long time ago from I don't know who wrote it down. It was in an old book. And it said, never trust a big button to smile. Right.